So on Ken Pohl's website, excelguru.ca, he has an interesting problem about taking data like this and rearranging it so the data is like this. Now we can easily create a pivot or do formulas and it's not too hard. So here's his blog post if you want to visit it. So let's look at the solution here. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to define the pattern because what if this changes? So we go up here and uh, we see that there's four items per set. So one, two, three, four, we see that right here. We also notice that there's always two blanks. So if that's not consistent, if it's a variable, well then it gets a little bit more difficult, but we could still get a solution for that. But in this case, there's always six of them. So here I'm just adding it up. There's six here, and then we get to the next group. There's a total of six, four items, and two blanks. So now I'm looking at, okay, so I go down here and I say out of all this range, and this might be longer, uh, we could make it up to 10,000 or however long the data goes, and this is the number of non-blanks in that range. Okay, so now we know the number of sets. We simply divide one by the other, 20 by 4, and we know there's five sets. So if we look in here and we were to scroll down, we see sure enough there are five sets of them. Now, this is something um, later on that we're going to use, but uh, it's just basically telling us how far down we have to go. So uh, we want to, well, I'll get that, to that in a minute. Uh, now, rows of formulas. This is something we'll use at the very end that is going to tell us how many rows of formulas that we need for this solution. So uh, let's just go to step two here. Type in the pattern and then replace with the formula. So we'll go back to the basics here and we want to see where the first item is always the date when we look at these guys. It's always the date. So let's just sort of test this out and let's just, we'll just type in counter and we're going to say row of a one and that's a one and we just drag this down a ways and we see the pattern that the first one, here we have a one, we have a seven and we have a 13. So that's what we want to get over here so that we have, we're pulling out uh, always jumping to the next date all the way down. So let's get rid of this now and we will now go to replacing that with a formula. So I, I'm kind of lazy so I typed in a 1 and here now really all this is doing, I mean it's looking for when to stop so let's just ignore all this part for now but we just need to look at this part. D11. D11 is the cell above and we're just adding six to it. So if this pattern changes and then you have four blanks in there, well this solution would work because we're simply saying take the one and add, let's say it's eight or nine. So this would work all the way down. So really it's only this part and then we just have if statements to, to see if, well, if the one above is blank, we stop. And if, let's say right in here, uh, it's looking at, uh, we're going to add six more to 25, that's 31. And here we have the stop, helper, counter, stop. 31 is greater than 28, so we stop and we get a blank. All right, so this part's easy. Uh, what we're going to do is we just need to get add the column headers and a horizontal counter. Because as we go across for the first set, we want to go down over here. So let's just get these guys, go up here. Now we have our column headers. This is the date. We have the place, the code and of course we have the amount over here. So we have those in there and can't forget these little guys. We just take these, it's a little crowded up here, but we'll just paste those in and this is how far, if we're already on the date that's fine, but here the, for the place we want to go down an extra one, so it's one plus one. Then over here it's one plus three, meaning if we're here we go down one, two, three, that's the code, and of course here it would be one plus three, which is four, starting there going down one, two, three, four. So now let's just go in here and create that formula using offset. Offset takes a reference or a starting point. We lock that. Let's look at how many rows. Well, we know we want to get this guy. Press F4 to lock it properly like this, plus the zero. And now we're just going to lock it exactly like that. And now how many columns to the right? Well, we're never going to the right or to the left, so we put a zero because it's uh, everything is in that column B. So now I press enter. So this is looking good. Uh, we're going to drag this down and now we have an error here. Okay, so here we have the blanks because we're just getting as many as we need to. We know that we have five sets right in here, so we only need five helpers to be visible. So let's now make this a little more 
a little smarter. If this, and we're going to lock it, just like that, if that equals blank, then, oops, if it equals blank, then blank, else if, if it's a number, of course we want to do our formula. So we drag this down. Now, we could just take this, copy, and I think we can just go like this and just paste the formulas. So now we have that everything looks good. Let's test uh, the last one, Burger King, that number 89.98. Perfect. So we have all the items in here. So of course I forgot to sh uh, just highlight this step. So that's creating the offset formula and then we have the if statement to tell it to put the blanks. Now this is where I mean, of course, we don't have to do this, but this is the fun part. We want to have a formula to tell us, did we drag our formulas down far enough? So, uh, let's create something here. If I take, I've already built the formula, I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to paste it over here. So, it says you have dragged down the helper formula one row too far. So, sure enough, we look in here and we have formulas in here and we don't really need them. And this is all blank. So that message, so if we were to uh, take this and delete it, now it says you have dragged down the formula far enough. So it's in green. So let's see what happens if we drag it down way too far, way down here. So now it's going to tell us you have dragged down the helper formula 22 rows too far. So really, all you have to do, I mean, if this is some massive data set and you're concerned that you have formulas sitting there that don't really do anything, well then you could just highlight this, control shift down, delete that, and now this is green. So if you ever got more data, and let's just test that out. Let's take this, this record, we're going to copy that, and we are going to paste it. There's two blanks, we're going to go right there, and we're going to paste it. Ah, so let's see if how smart it is. Please drag down the helper formula one row, oh, I think I made a mistake here, one row too far, but we need to drag it down one more. Ah, so I got to update that formula before I put it on my OneDrive. So I drag this down, and there it is. Now it's green again. So now we have six rows of formulas, and we also have um, six items, or six sets. Where are the sets in here? Number of sets, we have six. Rows of formulas, we have six. So it's working.